Okay, I shared yesterday a true life story about what happened to me when I woke up in the morning. I was feeling super slim, super good, and I was like, I have to hop on the scale. I usually only weigh myself on Sundays, but I had to hop on the scale, and I did not like the number I saw. It wasn't bad, but it reverted back to my pre three weeks of ship shop weight, and I was thinking to myself, this sucks, right? And then I had an epiphany, and I wanna share about that today, and why I hope you will all join me in this screw the scale movement, all right? So for those of you that do not know me, my name is Pamela Bussarello. I am a mom of three. I'm a high school English teacher. I've got a few weeks left before I head back to school. I am the face behind To Fit a Motherhood and my blog To Fill a Motherhood, and I'm a fitness coach. And I do not usually let something as arbitrary as a number on a scale get to me, but it totally got to me yesterday. It got to me for a few minutes. And then I sat back, took a deep breath, and thought, why am I letting a number that really means nothing, that no one else sees, that really changes day by day, that the shift of the earth and the point I'm in in my cycle and what I ate yesterday and what I didn't eat yesterday and how much water I drank and how much I slept and what time it is and yada, 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 all these things affect, why am I letting that get to me? It means nothing. It doesn't matter. When 30 seconds before I hopped on the scale, I was in the best mood and feeling totally confident. And there are so many reasons why I believe that we should let go of the scale and just focus on these positive wins every day that are a result of working out, that are a result of living a healthy life, and I'd love to help you get there. So here are the five things that I find to be the best side effect of living a fit life that have nothing to do with numbers and have nothing to do with the scale. Number one is energy. So I might wake up feeling super tired, but the second I get my workout started, I start to get some energy. I find it so um, contagious, this spirit and motivation that comes through with a workout, it leads me into the rest of the day and it helps fuel the rest of my fire throughout the day. I'm able to get more accomplished, I'm able to feel a little bit more patient, but it gives me this I can do it attitude. And it really doesn't matter if I do it in the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, in the evening, that energy is there and it lasts for like 12 hours afterwards and it just feels so good. And even when it's those times where I don't wanna push play or I don't wanna go for a run or I'm not feeling like getting sweaty, I give myself permission to give it five minutes. And if five minutes in, I'm really not feeling it, it's okay for me to just say, you know what, it's not, it's not happening today. Maybe do some stretching and call it a day. But for the most part, after that five minutes, that energy is peaked and I am in. It is game on and that energy just carries me throughout the rest of the day, the evening, whatever, it's perfect. So energy is one of the reasons why I say screw the scale fitness is good for your energy levels the second thing that I love about living a fit lifestyle is confidence as I said to you yesterday when I woke up I was feeling so good about myself and that number made me feel not so good at my, about myself and that number does not have any bearing on me as a human being it doesn't have any bearing on the fact that I've been successful I've been building muscle I've been feeling stronger feeling more energy feeling more patient happier in my own skin that my clothes are fitting better none of that mattered prior to me getting on the scale but the scale number psh, shot all that down but that scale has nothing to do with confidence if you feel confident who cares what the number says on the scale? Who cares what the number on the tag in your clothing says? Who cares what anybody who you walk by at the grocery store, or at the mall, or at your kid's soccer practice has to say or feel about you? If you feel confident, then you feel confident, right? Live it, own it. And working out, eating healthy, just kind of staying active gives me that sense of confidence. No matter what I actually look like or what size clothing I'm wearing, I just feel better about myself because I'm committing to my body, I'm making it stronger. Even if it doesn't look stronger yet, even if it doesn't look leaner, I know I'm doing something that's positive for my body and that creates confidence and it creates a sense of myself that I can do this again tomorrow and I can do this again next week. And that confidence helps me in my work. It helps me as a mom. It helps me in my relationships. It makes me feel like I can take on challenges. Like I can stand up for my beliefs or for 
you know, a project at school or to a grumpy parent. Like I just feel so much more confident in my day to day life because of this fit lifestyle. So screw the scale, yay to confidence. The third thing, and this is probably the most important and it's the thing that people don't always see but you feel and that is health. As I've shared before, but maybe you're not aware of this, I was a chronic migraine sufferer from the time I was a little girl. I used to have to wear a night guard um, on my teeth because I would grind my teeth and get migraines. Barometric pressure would give me migraines. Weather changes would give me migraines. Lighting, oh my gosh, I remember going out to dinner with my family on vacation one time and the lighting in the restaurant gave me such a bad migraine I actually passed out. I was just so sensitive to everything and would get migraines all the time. Certain foods would give me migraines, certain types of yogurt would give me migraines. I also am an IBS sufferer, which always feels kind of funky to say, but it's true. I know it's a really common disorder, um, so it, it is what it is, right? Since I was probably in my teens, I've been suffering from IBS, and I also have a kidney autoimmune disease. Since I started on my fitness journey, those things have pretty much been eradicated. I've had one migraine, my IBS is a non-issue, and my autoimmune disease have been pushed into remission. I no longer have chronic hematuria, I no longer am spilling protein, I am able to enjoy foods that I wasn't able to eat before, and it's because I'm nourishing my body every single day. So who cares about the scale, right? Screw that. If I'm feeling healthy, I'm feeling healthy, and it's important for me to feel healthy because that makes my family healthy. It makes me able to hang out with my family more, enjoy going out to eat with them, enjoy playing with my kids, not feeling embarrassed about, you know, going to a shore house with my in-laws for a couple of days, worried I'm going to have IBS. You know, it, it takes away a lot of that um, uncertainty in terms of my health so I really can't say anything about that whatsoever the fourth thing is attitude now I've been a positive attitude kind of person my entire life I am a smiler even when I'm upset I tend to smile I mean I'll go cry right I'm definitely a crier too but I default to a smile it's just the kind of person I am I default to a smile but that doesn't mean that I never felt insecure I have felt insecure pretty much my entire life I've always been one who's naturally a leader I put myself into leadership roles people put me into leadership roles I feel very comfortable as a leader but that also leads to insecurities it leads to this idea that I need to be perfect perfect, that I need to fulfill these obligations, not only for my own self, but for the sense of others. People are counting on me. Like there's all of these things that go into feeling that sense of um, leadership or perfection or whatever. And because I've had a positive attitude, I, sit, I go with it in gusto and a smile where behind the surface, I would be lacking confidence and feeling a little regretful or doubting my own abilities, a lot of pressure. That has been taken away. My attitude has taken such a shift because I know now that I just do the best I can. And I believe that fitness has helped me to do that. And certain programs that I've fallen into where I did the day one and I could hardly finish a rep or I had to press pause multiple times. But by the end of 21 days or 30 days or a 60 day challenge, I was able to do more than I ever thought possible. That positivity is real. And I see that, okay, just because today might be difficult or I'm not as perfect as I want to be today or I'm not as successful as I want to be today doesn't mean tomorrow isn't going to be better because I tried. And that shift in my attitude has been such a game changer. Now the way I feel on the inside matches the smile on my face on the outside. My ability to be a leader doesn't scare me anymore. It makes me want to be a leader because I can share with the people who I'm leading, whether it's in my classroom, whether it's in a project in school, whether it's my coaching team, whatever it is, that it's all a work in progress and we just can try. And if we fail or don't succeed once in a while, it's just, it's fine. And fitness has really showed me that. And heck with the scale, right? I don't need a scale to teach me this positive attitude. And finally, the thing that I love about fitness and health the most that has nothing to do with the scale is that it belongs to me right? It's totally mine. So when I do a workout, I am dialed into myself. I am breathing in words of positivity from my trainers. I am spreading that positivity to my challengers, but those minutes in between belong to me. How hard I work belongs to me. The time I'm spending with my own thoughts belongs to me. I've actually put a whiteboard and a chalkboard in the garage gym that we've been 
you know, putting together because I have found that when I'm working out, my to-do list is like rapid fire. I am totally dialing into all the things I want to accomplish, everything I want to do that day, ideas for school, ideas for my challenge groups, and I just take the breaks in between and write all over that whiteboard because it is the time in my day that is mine. My mind is quiet in terms of what everyone else needs and it's opened up to what I need. And that me time is so valuable and a scale cannot weigh that. It cannot measure the importance of that me time on my soul, on my patience. I've said patience about 70 times. I guess that's the bonus sixth reason why I find fitness to be so important and why we should just say screw the scale. Like get rid of it. It's gone. So why am I sharing this today? Because I want to challenge you to join me in September for a screw the scale September shred. Okay? I'm an English teacher. Lots of, lots of alliteration. I know this sounds a little harsh, but I mean it. I want us to take the month of September, throw away the scales, move them out of the room, get them out of the house, put them under the bed or in the closet, whatever you need to do. Do not touch that scale, but you are going to join me for a month of fitness, a month of health that is going to show you all these benefits. Your energy is going to be skyrocketed. Your confidence is going to be real and truthful and it's going to emulate from you as the second you walk into a room. You're going to wake up feeling more like yourself. You're going to be healthier. Whatever those issues that are bothering you, I promise you by the end of 30 days, they're going to be changed. They're going to feel better or at least you're going to find a way to manage them or to manipulate them in a way that is, is more pleasing to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Your attitude is going to take such a positive shift. You're going to feel the positive vibes that I'm going to pour into the challenge group, that the trainers are going to pour into this. You're going to just feel it by the end of September. And you're going to have your me time. Whether it's 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, we're going to find exactly what's going to allow you to have that time where your thoughts belong to you. Your effort belongs to you. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Everyone in the world has said that to you. I have said it to you a billion times. It's true. You cannot pour from an empty cup. I can't, I, maybe I said that wrong earlier. You cannot pour from an empty cup. So you need to fill your cup before you can give it to others. And moms, we are so used to just giving to our husbands, to our kids, to our work life, to our neighbors, to you know some of the grocery store who needs us to hold the door for them. You know, we're constantly giving to other people. But you need that 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day to pour into your own cup first so you have plenty to spill out for other people. Join me. Who's gonna join me? I hope that you'll join me. Say you will below or send me a message so that I can get you set up this month while the price is right, right so that when September kicks off, we are ready to go. September shred, screw the scale, we're gonna throw it out and we're gonna live in these five modes of positive energy, positive confidence, increased health and wellness. We're going to get our mind right with a better attitude and we're also going to dial into our me time. I hope you'll join me. This is exactly what you've been craving. Trust me because that number on the scale, it doesn't matter. It doesn't define you and it cannot measure any of these other positive traits. So send me a message or comment below so I can get you enrolled this weekend so we can get prepped and ready to go. And tag a friend who you think would be willing to join us because this is for everybody. Can't wait to challenge with you and to show you exactly how awesome your life can be, no matter what number appears on that scale. Have a great weekend.